Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So I've been going back and uh, looking at some of the old Tip of the Week videos, as well as uh, talking to a few customers recently, and I realized that uh, maybe I should just go back to the basics a little bit and go over um, one of the more um, you know first topics that we really should have gone over, which was drawings versus keyframes. And the reason I want to take it back to this level and just go over this is because I feel like it's something that is a little bit misunderstood in the software and that some people, you know, some people get it really easily and then some people don't. So um, the way that we handle drawings and keyframes is slightly different than other technologies, which is the reason that I do want to go ahead and uh, go over it. So um, I'm going to do my presentation here in Harmony, uh, but this is actually applicable for Animate, Anime Pro, and Harmony, so it doesn't really matter which one of the products you're using, you'll be able to follow along with this video. Um, and I will just get started here by doing a few drawings. So let's do our typical bouncing ball. So I'm going to have my more or less round ball at the top. And as I go down, I can turn on my onion skin and I can kind of elongate the ball as it picks up speed and so on and so forth. Then I will have my bounce frame and back on up again. Having it finish at that same um, rounded out frame as I started at. And then I can always, as I'm doing this, I can always drag my onion skin over if I want to uh, make sure that I'm going to finish up my loop, because I'm going to make a loop out of this. If I want to finish up my loop in the same place that I started, then I can just go back and double check um, and uh, make sure that I line these guys up more or less. The reason I don't do the same drawing or I don't copy and paste exactly the same drawing is because I like to have a bit more of an organic feeling uh, when I do my bouncing ball. But if you prefer to have it look exact, then of course you can copy and paste on the way back up as well. So when I play back with my bouncing ball, I see, you know, I see a bouncing ball happening here, but it is a little bit fast. So let's go in here and start to talk a little bit about what we're doing. Um, by the way, when I was doing that playback just now, I did a little trick that you may not know about. Um, by default, well, your playback is set to playback your entire project. So there are these little triangles, little black triangles there that show uh, where the playback is happening. Also, if you look in your playback toolbar, then you can see the start frame, which is where the playback is starting, the stop frame, where the playback is stopping, and uh, you know the frame rate, and which is the current frame that it's on. Um, if I just want to play back this region, I can actually just move my playhead over where I want this thing to stop, and then if you actually mouse over the word stop, you can click on that. It's a button that you can click on. And then you can turn on loop and hit play and play back your animation. So, so far so good, except that it's going a little bit fast. Now, when we're talking about drawings, I just want to explain a little bit more basic what a drawing is or how you can see a drawing and all of that information. So, when we're working in Toon Boom, we actually have a separate concept of drawings and keyframes on a specific drawing layer you can go in and you can create new drawings so if you think of it it's like you know if you have uh, a stack of paper or you're doing a little flip book and you're creating a new drawing on each frame when you play back you'll see those playing in a sequence so that's what the drawings are like here and if I see if I look in this um, window here I see that a drawing shows up as a gray area and in between each drawing there is a vertical line so I can tell when I'm swapping from one drawing to another because I see this vertical line happen now I can also double check if I mouse over where the gray is I get a, a tool tip that shows me the name of the drawings that I'm working on so if in any doubt you can always go back and kind of just mouse over and double check uh, lastly you can also show the data view here the data view is like a special section of your timeline that when you're mousing over a drawing it shows the drawing name and you can even click and drag on this to swap the drawings out so let's leave that back on drawing one to have that make more sense but just so you know that that's there so at this point what I really want to do is I want to slow this down so if I select all of my drawings I can right click on the drawings and I can go to exposure set exposure to two now, what exposure is, is exposure is defining how long a drawing is showing. So because I drew a new drawing each frame, each drawing was exposed for one frame. 
Now, if I'd like to slow it down and make it half as fast, then I want to set the exposure to two so that each drawing lasts for two frames. So if I go ahead and do that, then I can see right away in my timeline what's happening there. I can go back, set the stop frame again, and now I can play back and double check how this animation is working. So this is actually looking pretty good now. Um, you know, my ball may be too much elongated, so I can go back and change the shape and, and make it more circular, but at this point I'm really not really going to worry about that. So um, at least I can see the timing is working. If I want to slow it down even more, you can either set the exposure to three, or you can go back and do more breakdown drawings, because the more drawings that you have, the slower it will go. And that's the reason why we tend to put quite a few drawings really close together at the top, where the ball is moving more slowly. So, you know, if I wanted it to appear to be going even more slowly at the beginning and then faster down there, then I'll move those ones that are closer to the top uh, up a little bit. And then that will give that illusion of it being, you know, faster or slower at the top and then faster as it goes down. So before I get into the nitty gritty of the difference between drawing and keyframes, I want to actually just create a cycle out of this bouncing ball. So if I want to create a cycle out of this, the first thing I want to do is select the frames that I want to work with. And you can either, if you have a different cell selected over here, you can just click and drag to select the frames. Or you can select the first and then hold down shift and select to the last. And at this point now I can right click and do copy cell from the timeline. Or you can do control or command C. And now I can go to my first available frame here and I can right click and I can do a paste cycle. Now because I drew the ball going down and coming back up again, I can actually just do a normal cycle. If I had only drawn half the cycle, then I'd have to go down and then I'd have to, uh, and then I could do a forward to reverse or a reverse to forward depending on how I had drawn it. But because I'm just doing a normal cycle here, I'll just select normal and then now I can click OK and it has gone ahead and filled that in. So I can now set my stop frame to be the end of the, of the scene and now I can just hit loop and play back and double check to make sure that that's working. So far so good. So if I go back and double check again, I can see in my timeline, I can see that each drawing lasts for two frames because I'm only seeing that vertical line once every other frame. So the way that it works when we're working with drawings is that whenever you do a drawing in Toon Boom, it is saving that drawing in your library automatically for that drawing layer. So as soon as I select this drawing layer, I see here all the drawings that I did on that layer. And I have those drawings accessible. And then when I did my paste cycle, it's actually reusing the same drawings again. And so if I made a change, for example, if I decide to go in here and uh, paint these guys in, then I'll see that change happen on each one of the um, drawings that's in my scene. So I don't have to go one by one and do them all. I just have to do it once and then I see that change. So um, that's how drawings are reused in a project. But when it comes down to me wanting now to, for example, move this cycle here from the left to the right, this is where keyframes start coming into play. So there's two ways of doing this. I can either um, take my transform tool. So the transform tool is our generic animation tool. It's the one we can use to put keyframes on things. I can either take my transform tool and put keyframes directly on my drawing layer, or I can use a separate layer called a peg. So let's say if I decide to put this directly on the drawing layer, I can move my ball over to the left-hand side, and then I can move it over to the middle, for example and then I can play back and I can see how this motion is working. But let's say if I want to speed that up, if I want to speed up this motion, I want to take the keyframe and I want to drag it earlier. If I select my keyframe and I simply drag it, it's dragging both the keyframe and the drawing. And I can see that because here um, I now see two vertical lines instead of one long you know, block there. And then I'm also going to see a jump in that drawing where I don't want that drawing to swap in. You see it swapped in. So that's kind of annoying. Now, we brought in some of the new versions here. We brought in the, uh, the ability to select whether you want to drag and drop or copy and paste just keyframes or 
drawings. So if I take the paste mode here and I select keyframe instead, I can click on the keyframe and I can drag the keyframe over and now you see it didn't do anything to the drawing, it just brought the keyframe. And if I play back, then I see now this is happening twice as fast. And now I see the bouncing ball moving in the beginning and then bouncing on the spot. So that works pretty well, but the only difficulty with this is that when I'm working with drawings and keyframes on the same layer, I have to keep going back and switching between these modes depending on what I'm trying to work with at that time. And I find that to be a little, um, you know, as I find it slows me down a little bit. And so this is the reason why I like to separate out keyframes onto their own layer. But just so I can point this out, what we've done so far here is something that you can't do in Flash because um, the way that it works, and, th and the reason I say Flash specifically is because that's the technology that this usually trips people up with when they come from Flash. So the, re the way that Flash works is every time you have a new keyframe, it forces a new drawing and vice versa. So if you want to go back in and create a path like that, it's actually way more difficult. So let's say if I'm just going to remove these keyframes now. So I'm back to my regular old bouncing ball that's bouncing on the spot. Let's say I'd like to um, you know, isolate my keyframes onto their own layer. There's a layer that we have that we can do this on, which is called the peg layer. So a peg layer is simply an empty layer that contains position, rotation, and scale information. It's an empty layer where you can save your transforms. And when you create a peg layer and you put your keyframes on that peg layer, Anything that's a child of that peg layer will inherit those transforms, so it will behave the same way as the parent layer. So if I take my ball layer here, and let's actually label this ball so that I don't get lost later on. Um, if I take my ball layer here and I click the Add Peg button, this will create a peg that's a parent of the layer that I have selected. Now, by the way, before I go any further, if you don't have any layer selected and you click the Add Peg button, you get this message. And I just for once and for all would like to clear up what this message is all about. So it says, cannot add peg in this display mode, change to display all. So if you change to display all, what it does is it shows floating nodes in your network. So let's not confuse you guys yet. Let's take a look at what is the network and then I can explain to you how that works. So when we're working in the network view, the network is another way of displaying connections and information. So I see here I have um, my bouncing ball shows up as a module and that drawing module is connected to a composite. The composite is used to gather together different things. So if I have a bunch of different drawings, all of these different drawings will be connected to my composite by default and then it's going, the composite takes these drawings gathers them together so that you can do something with it. Most of the time what you're doing when you gather those together is you're going to write to disk. So for example if you want to export a QuickTime movie or an image sequence you want to flatten together and take all of the information from your project. The other thing you want to do is display them in your camera. So what's displayed in my camera view right now is everything that's actually dis that is connected to this display module. And the reason why that's important to understand is that um, we always do that because we always want to show in the camera view exactly what you're going to write to disk. And so what that display all module does though, if you, if you, change, it, if you change the display mode to display all, what that does is it shows everything even if it's not connected to the composite. So I don't usually recommend that as a good way of working. Let me show you what happens when I add a peg. So when I add a peg layer and I have a layer selected, it makes that peg a parent of the layer automatically. If I look in my network view, I see that connected to the drawing layer. So because it's connected to the drawing layer, it's connected to the composite, which is connected to the display, so I see it. So it works, shows over here. If you just create a floating one, so if I am in my network view and I hit Control P or Command P, this adds a floating peg. Notice something here. When you look at your peg here, you don't see it in the timeline. And the reason that you don't see it in the timeline is because it's not in any way connected to your display module. A peg layer always has to be a parent of something, of a drawing layer. 
um, when it's just floating, it's just not doing anything. It's just existing in space. And so if I want to see it in my timeline, I have to connect it here, or I have to connect it to something. So the reason that you get that error cannot, um, you know, that it cannot create it is because if you add a peg that's a floating peg from your timeline, it won't show up in your timeline. So it's saying, hey, you're, you're adding something that you can't see. So if you, you know, if we did allow that and you added a bunch of pegs here, you would end up adding a bunch of pegs that you would not be able to see in your timeline. And then if you went to your network view later on, you'd be like, oh my gosh, it's like full of pegs. So that's the reason that we disable that from the timeline. So by default, if you want to add a peg layer in the timeline, you should make sure that you select the layer that you want it to be a parent of. And then you can just add it very easily using the add peg button. So keeping that in mind. Um, now what the peg layer does, as I mentioned earlier, is it saves position, rotation, and scale, or transformation information. And then it passes along that information down to the child, whatever is connected to it. So if I go back now and I do the same thing that I did before on the ball layer, but I do it on the peg layer instead, a couple of things you'll notice different. The peg layer, when I have um, a drawing selected, it's kind of shaded in pink. And then when I select a peg layer, it's shaded in yellow. Now, if I move that over to the left-hand side and then I move it over to the middle um, and I play back, I see just about the same thing that I saw when I did the example using the drawing layer. But what's way easier now is that I can just select my keyframe and I can just drag and drop my keyframe without worrying about it doing anything to my drawing layer. So now I can double check the timing of that and see whether that works. So hopefully now you have a little bit of a better understanding about the differences between drawings and keyframes. So being able to handle the keyframes and the drawing separately means that I can control where things are moving around separately from which drawing is showing on that frame. And this becomes very powerful for a number of different reasons. It's very powerful when you're doing frame by frame animation, when you might want to apply a certain transformation to a variety of different drawing layers, but it also is extremely powerful when we're talking about cutout animation as well, because you can separately um, control and go in and tweak the keyframes and where things are moving from where the drawing swap is happening. So it means that you can do all of your keyframe animation first and then go in later and throw some blinks on there when the character needs to blink. Um, or you could go the other way where you could go in and do all the lip sync first and then go and animate the position of the head. So being able to do it one way or the other is really um, very, makes it a very flexible system, but it all comes back to understanding this basics of the difference between drawings and keyframes. So hopefully that was useful, and I will see you guys on another episode of Tip of the Week.